Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Kieran and I will both be uh, running in and reviewing the Vaporfly X% 2 uh, in a full review down the line, but after uh, my first run it today, I did kind of about 20k, including a 16k workout today, we thought we'd give you our initial thoughts. Um, start with the key stats of the shoe, and perhaps most importantly of all, the price has come down. Uh, in the UK, it's going to be $209.95, and it's $225 in the US. Uh, the Vaporfly X% was 240 quid in the UK. Uh, the weight has gone up very slightly for me in my UK size 9. It's now 206 grams, which is 7.3 ounces. My Vaporfly Next Percent weighs just, just under 200 grams, 199, 198, something like that. Although, obviously, I've used it for a while. I don't think I weighed it when I first got it a few years ago, but I think it is slightly lighter than the new version. But the drop remains the same at 8 millimeters. In terms of the changes to the shoe, it's really all about the upper. Um, basically, Nike has replaced the kind of vapor weave material used on the Vaporfly Next Percent with a kind of breathable mesh, it's a very breathable mesh, it's really open, see my hand for it, that's the classic kind, um, and there's some reinforced sections for kind of extra stability, and there's quite a lot of reinforcement around the toe box here, as you can see. There's also some extra cushioning on the tongue uh, to try and avoid putting too much pressure on the top of your foot when you crank these offset laces nice and tight. The laces themselves have changed to a slightly kind of ribbed thing that actually grips really well. I do like the lace change. So yeah, so lots of the, basically all the changes here are in the upper, and after kind of one run of the shoe, I think it's probably a positive development. Um, so vapor weave, I think it was a bad material, but it uh, tended to bunch a bit in the forefoot. There's that kind of slightly crisp packet effect that it had um, but yeah so Nike has decided to kind of really completely change the upper to a kind of knitted thing that's a little bit like the Atom Knit um, it's quite like the Atom Knit on the um, Alpha Fly for me but maybe a little bit stretchier I think um, in the midsole of the shoe you still got carbon plate you still got the Nike Zoom X foam the kind of the Wonder Foam Piba based foam that provides all that spring and cushioning for uh, you know while still being very lightweight and the outsole of the shoe is also completely unchanged um, you've got kind of quite a lot of rubber at the front here, little rubber sections at the back here. I think this up, this outsole actually stood up to a lot more than I expected. Uh, are my um, Vaporfly Next Percent originals gone for a lot in that shoe and um, it doesn't really show many, much signs of wear and tear, even around here and I heel strike and it hasn't really ripped up that part of the shoe at all. So yeah, good, decent outsole that grips pretty well I think in most conditions. <laughs> In terms of the fit of the shoe, I have gone true to size in the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, which I did in, this, in the original version as well. So I'm wearing the same size in both shoes, and I've had no problems with either. I did kind of, like I say, 20k out of the box in these today. Um, the toe box seems kind of wider and more roomy. I think maybe this reinforced section keeps the material off your toes a little bit, where it, where it hugged maybe slightly closer with the vapor weave. But yeah, no rubbing at all, no problems on that front. Um, easy to get on and off, uh, fits nicely around the midfoot, nice lockdown fit with these offset laces, slightly kind of more cushioning there on the tongue. So yeah, I think true size is the way to go. Just heading out for first run in the Nike Vaporfly 2. Uh, today I'm going to be running a alternating 16k, alternating 3.30 per k and 4 minutes per k pace. Um, I'm about 10 days out from a target marathon where I'll be hoping to run about 3.33 per k for a sub 2.30. So today should be a good session, um, hard but you know not too hard and good spell of time, at, you know just slightly quicker than marathon pace. Really good chance to test out the new shoes. So we've just gone through 11k, uh, so I'm on one of the four minute k's now, it's about 40 minutes. The pacing's been a bit tricky with GPS, tomfoolery, and cars, but everything's on pace quite comfortably. The shoe is the Vaporfly, <laughs> um, the midsole feels the same, same kind of squishy when you're running easy and then you firm up as you get faster and start to get that propulsive feel from the plate and that Zoom X foam. Upper change is positive in that I um, haven't noticed the shoe at all while running. Uh, I think that kind of reinforced section at the front Keeps the uh, fabric a little bit more off your toes, which could be a nice thing. There's no kind of pressure on the top of my laces, which I did get a bit with the old style up, but with no cushioning on the tongue. But yeah, the usual comfortable, amazing, quick ride. Fantastic shoe. Uh, I've got about four and a half K left. Knock those out and we'll talk more about it.
session all done um not too much to add to what i was saying on the run there uh like i say the vape fly also was great underfoot uh it's got that lovely responsive feel to it propulsive feel no downsize this new upper uh, i didn't mind the old one potentially but yeah didn't feel it at all on the run no hot spots no rubbing done you know kind of 16k out of the box and feels good so yeah i'll um talk a bit more about shoe in the early verdict but yeah first run was an enjoyable classic vapor fly experience So my early verdict on the Vapor Next Percent 2 is that the changes are for the better and the most important change of all is the fact that Nike has made it cheaper. That um, puts makes it a lot more competitive with quite a lot of the carbon shoes out there. You know, that kind of 210 price point is still at the upper range of what you're paying for a carbon plate shoe, but it's not, Nike were just the most expensive shoes by a long way. The Alpha Fly is still obviously out there at 260 pounds is the most expensive shoe, but when you consider the Adidas, Adios Pro is 170 pounds. Saucony Endorphin Pro is 190, and then there's a few kind of around that 210, 220 pound mark. I think it's a good move by Nike. It's really going to help them fend off competition as the carbon plate kind of wars intensify. The upper changes on the shoe are also positive. Like I never had a huge problem with the upper on the first one. The O, so I never had any problems around the toe box at all. I know it bunched up a little bit, but it didn't bother me. The fit was fine. Um, I ran marathons in it perfectly comfortably. I will say on the original one, I did get some slight pressure from the um, laces when I cranked them really tight on race day and I this cushioning today seemed to alleviate that slightly. Again, it wasn't a huge problem, but it's a positive change and the price is cheaper. That's what you can really ask for. So yeah, small changes, lower price, good is how I'd rate that. Um, in terms of where you'd rate the Vaporfly and the kind of ladder or rankings of carbon plate shoes, we'll discuss that a lot more in the full review video with Kieran. Uh, I personally really like the Alpha Fly. That is my favorite racing shoe. I've got a marathon coming up and I'll be doing that in the Alpha Fly. Um, but I have loved racing marathons in the Vaporfly as well. Um, I think I also really like the Endorphin Pro from Saucony, the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. They're kind of two other shoes that I put right up there with this as maybe just slightly behind the Alpha Fly. Um, and then the Adios Pro is also really good and it's a lot cheaper. It's just very hard to get hold of. I think if you're racing 5k, 10k, there's definitely much more of a case for using the Vaporfly over the Alpha Fly because it's you know lighter, nimbler, turns a bit better, goes around corners a bit better, I should say. Um, but yeah, broadly speaking, it's a very good carbon shoe. It's a bit cheaper, the upper's a bit better, and the ride is unchanged, which is a good thing because the ride is very, very good indeed. Thanks very much guys. That's it for our kind of quick first look review on the Vaporfly 2. Um, we'll obviously have a full review coming down the line quite quickly as soon as me and Kieran get some extra miles into this shoe. Um, but yeah, please comment below what you think about the changes Nike has made. Were you hoping for a, a revolutionary change to the Vaporfly or are you happy that you just tinkered with it a little bit? And of course, tell us what your carbon plate shoe of choice is right now. Uh, we love to hear about it. We love talking about carbon plate shoes. And yeah, like, subscribe, ring the little bell somewhere around here and um, we'll see you next time.